Good day, everybody. This is Stacy Kruzik from the Dev Relations team here at Zebra Technologies. Um, today we have Darren Campbell presenting on GMS Restricted. And we're going to go ahead and get this underway in just one moment to allow everybody to come in. But if you have any questions, we'll save those to the end. And we'll go through some housekeeping things at the beginning. So give us one more minute while we wait for some folks to join. Thank you. Okay, I'm hoping everybody can hear me today, and we welcome you to the DevTalk uh, webinar today. I uh, just wanted to open it up um, and let you know about um, our soon upcoming app form. Our registration for our Europe event is already underway. We, again, are presenting um, this technology forum, uh, gaining an intelligent end edge on the enterprise IT and software development platforms and such. And we're hoping that you can all join us with Europe kicking off in June, registration open. We'll have registration open for our Sydney location and our Beijing location um, within the next month. And then at the end, we will have um, Americas, which is our um, Las Vegas location, which is occurring in October. Um, if you need any information on any of that, I encourage you to go to zebra.com uh, slash app forum. Um, you can also find information on our developer platform, and that would be developer.zebra.com. And we encourage you to join our community to receive the latest updates and technical news. And with that, uh, today, I'm going to be turning it over to Darren. And as a quick note, just note that if you want to pose any type of questions during this webinar, go ahead and post those up in the window, um, the chat window. We'll reserve those questions and responses at the end of this webinar. So with that, I'm turning over to Darren. Thank you, Stacey. Yeah, and just to apologize, I was putting this slide together very quickly before this presentation. I realized I duplicated the Sydney slot. But yeah, the Las Vegas one is happening at the beginning of October, like Stacey said. Uh, so we're going to cover GMS Restricted today. This is a brand new feature which is starting to get rolled out onto Zebra mobile computers. And just to so a little bit of the terminology, first of all, GMS stands for Google Mobile Services. These are the additional applications and services which Google add to Android, for example, the Play Store, Chrome, Maps, uh, services like Enhanced Location and uh, like Device Attestation. And we'll, we'll go into in detail what those are. Um, we have historically had a number of customers who have shied away from the full GMS package so they have had what we called an AOSP or a non-GMS SKU it was a separate version of the device firmware that you could download separate version of Android and it did not have it have any of these kind of GMS bundled features what we're doing with our latest portfolio of devices is we're now moving to an all GMS portfolio and there's a number of advantages uh, for developers and administrators to doing that but in order to address the concerns of those customers who previously had the AOSP devices, the non-GMS devices, we've introduced this new feature, GMS Restricted, which I've termed as bridging the gap between the two. Uh, you could also see it as the best of both worlds, but hopefully by the end of this presentation, you will at least go away uh, understanding what it is. So, well, that's probably a good place to start. Then what is GMS Restricted? So on a GMS restricted device, remember our, we, our portfolio now is, is an all GMS portfolio. Uh, GMS restricted is the ability to disable all GMS applications on the device. So I've listed a few examples there, the Play Store, Chrome, Gmail, Maps, Duo, uh, you know, uh, we'll, more, more examples coming in following slides. Um, but it, we don't just offer the ability to disable everything. We also have the ability to selectively re-enable specific use cases, and we've called those profiles. And again, we'll get into that later in the presentation. The keyboard handled uh, in a special way. The Gboard as shipped on a GMS device is actually a, a GMS component. And so 
after configuring the device to be in GMS restricted, you may well set the keyboard to one of the alternatives that we make available, either the AOSP keyboard from the open source code base or our own enterprise keyboard. So we disable all applications that are GMS apps. We also disable all GMS services and automatically opt out of any analytics data collection, which Google, like you, when you go through the setup wizard and you, you click yes, feel free to gather my data or feel free to know my location, we opt out of all of those automatically for you. Dose mode is disabled and this is main done mainly done to match the uh, non-GMS behavior that we had on AOSP devices. And once a device is in the restricted state, then no data will leave that device from GMS apps or services on the platform um, at a state of rest. Uh, so you can be safe in the knowledge that your device isn't sat on the table communicating with Google as you're going about doing your work. Again, you're safe in the knowledge that no data is going through Google servers unless you explicitly enable that as part of a profile more detail later on uh, so just quickly on the terminology it's important to understand we, we chose the word restricted very specifically because although you're restricting the device from communicating with google which from a privacy concern from for many of our customers will be a good thing you are also restricting the capabilities of the device google offers uh, an awful lot of functionality in their GMS applications and services. And by disabling those, you're obviously not uh, allowing those uh, that those value adds to take place. Um, but this is where we the profiles come in and we try and offer the best of both worlds. But let's let's just go into what this looks like on the device. So out of the box, this is what a I think these are from a TC57 running the latest OS. You'll notice that uh, when you factory reset or when you just get the device out of the box, you have a Google uh, uh, folder on the home screen here, and we have the Gmail and uh, the contacts app. All of the apps here, like Drive, Keep, YouTube, uh, very, uh, you know, obviously some of these have more impact uh, on day to day enterprise than, than other apps, but the key is that these are all part of the standard GMS applications that are mandated to be as part of the Android image by Google. So we have to ship with these, even as an OEM, we have no choice. Uh, but if you choose to configure your device as a GMS restricted device, then the, the, the same screenshots would look like this. So notice how there are now no longer any Google links on the home screen. There's no Google links in the launch in the whatever this is called down here launcher bar and in the launcher itself uh, no GMS apps available all of these are just zebra value added obviously visor I just installed to take these screenshots but uh, yeah notice how no GMS apps remain so why would a customer choose to configure their device for GMS restricted so I, yeah I should I should clarify this isn't a separate BSP or a separate SKU that you're downloading from the Zebra support portal. This is just a configuration option that you set on the device, just like you configure your Wi-Fi settings, your WAN settings, you um, run application installation, maybe through stage now. It's another stage now configuration setting that you can apply uh, as part of the initial device staging. Uh, this feature is only available on what we call the SD660 line of devices. So our our most recent devices that we're currently shipping that have the Snapdragon 660 chipset, which you know, if, if you're looking for device numbers, it will be the 52, 57, 7, well, the ones I've listed there. And the more recent announcements, the uh, 93 and the 83 that were recently announced, those are all running the very latest uh, SD660 chipset. They're only available as a GMS image. And so we support restricted mode so that you can um, so that you can like essentially mimic that AOSP like functionality. Devices which already ship with an AOSP image, like the TC51, for example, it shipped, I think it started on Marshmallow, might have been Nougat, but it, it had an AOSP image available and it will continue to have an AOSP image for the life cycle of that device. So it's recently received its Oreo update 
and notice that there is an Oreo AOSP image for the TC51, but not for the TC52. So it's in that upgrade from the 51 to the 52 that you would consider using GMS restricted. Um, the other reasons why, uh, primarily this addresses privacy concerns for the customers that were previously buying AOSP, non-GMS, were doing so because they had privacy concerns. They didn't want their data going to Google under any circumstances. This was seen as a security concern, security risk. Um, and so under GMS restricted, then those, pro those privacy issues are no longer issues. We, do, we did have a, quite a strong, a strong voice asking for GMS-like features on our AOSP devices in the past. And you know, a very common request was, hey, we, we really like AOSP, but we want to have Firebase cloud messaging because we like the asynchronous message nature of that. And we've listened to those requests, those concerns, and this is where the profile features come in, which enables you to have a restricted GMS device, but we have enabled um, FCM or, or, or Chrome, or we'll, we'll get to the profiles in a subsequent slide. And this enables full administrator control. So you can make sure that you know what's disabled on the device, you know what's enabled, and you don't have to worry when you receive an update from one version of the operating system to the next. Let's say that new operating system has new GMS applications on it. We take care of making sure that those new GMS apps are disabled for you, those new GMS services. You don't have to worry about any of that. All you need to know is that your device is in a restricted mode and it remains in a restricted mode until you take the device out of that mode. So we've gone over the what, we've gone over the why. Um, let's look at the how. So like I said previously, this is achieved or you put the device into GMS restricted through a configuration option via stage now. Um, like I, I said earlier, it's not a separate image or a separate SKU that you download. So we have a new CSP, configuration and configurable service package. It's, it's just uh, how, we, how we classify the actions that you can perform within stage now. It's called GMS Manager. It exposes three different actions. Now notice the first one is just the out of box state. Everything is enabled, nothing's changed. That's you know, how your device will be received. The new feature, GMS Restricted, will work today. Many of our devices have received the update to MX 8.3 in the latest Lifeguard patch. So you can download this today and, and play with this yourself. And this is the setting which restricts all GMS applications and services on the device. We have a third action that you can perform within GMS Manager, and this is called Profiled, which disables all but a specific use case, which you know, as, as defined by the profile. This is not shipping yet. Uh, we're still working on it. It will be released very soon. Current documentation states that this will apply to MX 9.0. MX is our value adds mobility extensions that we build on top of standard Android. So I, I, I think we generally follow the Android version numbers, but I'm not guaranteeing that. So I'm, I'm by no means saying this will be available in Pi. I'm just saying that at the moment it's available in MX 9.0. So these are the three options to put your device into GMS restricted. Now, previously we had uh, a very similar feature of the app manager. This was enable GMS apps and disable GMS apps. And this allowed you to do very similar things. So if you called disable GMS apps from the app manager, it would disable everything uh, that was GMS applications, services. Um, but just bear in mind that was a an instantaneous state that you could put the device into. It did not persist and it was not controllable or manageable, uh, a user or uh, anyone else could go in and, and re-enable applications piecemeal after you'd done that. And it was relatively easy to get the device into uh, an unknown state. And obviously that's something you want to avoid. Whereas GMS Manager is what we would suggest you use in preference. It's a very managed and locked down state that you're putting the device into. So I've, I've spoken about the profiles are quite a lot so far, these upcoming profiles, let's just go over what they are. 
So we have three profiles that we are going to be releasing at launch. Now, bear in mind, these cannot be combined with each other. So you would choose one of these three profiles. Uh, if, if you want any profile at all, you, you don't have to have any profile. If you want uh, to enable a browser, then you could choose the Chrome profile. If you want maps, then there's a map profile. If you want what I previously mentioned, Firebase cloud messaging, this ability to asynchronously send messages to devices uh, that will be received regardless of whether the device is in doze mode or uh, experiencing background restrictions, then you would use Firebase cloud messaging. It's important to understand that these applications never exist in isolation on a GMS device and they're closed source. So it's not like because we're an Android OEM, we have access to all of Google's application source code. That's very much not the case, although that would be nice. Uh, the, they have dependencies on the platform. Uh, so this is what I'm trying to capture with this third column on the right hand side. So Chrome, for example, has very few dependencies. I, actually, I don't think today it has any dependencies. So we can just enable the Chrome application on top of a GMS restricted device and it will work. When we come to maps and we enable maps, we have to enable other services on the device. So not just the app, but also location services, the high accuracy location provider and Google Play services itself as a package in order to get the maps profile working. And what that means is that data will be leaving the device going through Google servers, just like you know, data is leaving your mobile phone if you're running Android and passing through Google servers. It needs to because Google owns the, uh, the, the association between Wi-Fi MAC addresses and location long and lats, for example. It also owns all the mapping data. You know, we, we need to put some data through Google servers. But the key is that it's a trade-off. You're, you're going to have less data going through those servers than if you were to uh, enable everything and so you understand the nature of that data as well so you know that the data going through is only going to be required to enable the mapping use case and similar logic applies to firebase cloud messaging there is uh, I, I do have a slide that concerns itself with how you might go about testing that for yourself and you know, describes how we tested this so we'll, we'll get to that in a in a subsequent slide but those are the three profiles at launch um, these dependencies may change from Android version to Android version. So let's say we're running Pi. No, we'd be running Oreo today, wouldn't we? Because we only go up to Oreo at the moment with our devices. If you then update your device to Pi and it's running the Maps profile, then as a user or an administrator, you do not have to worry that the underlying Maps dependencies have changed. You don't have to um un unconfigure the device and reconfigure it in GMS restricted. We do all of that for you and we do all of the testing to make sure that that profile remains working across that update. Now that is quite a lot of work uh, for for us to maintain with every version of the operating system, particularly when this stuff is closed source. So that's why we only have the three profiles today. Obviously, we're, we're listening to customer feedback. If there are additional profiles that are needed, if we need to combine the profiles for, for any reason, then that's definitely feedback that we will take on board and prioritize accordingly and get that work done. So just see these three profiles as the start of, of, of um, more profiles, undoubtedly. Uh, so to talk about the out-of-box experience, just it's quite simple, but I just want to make this very clear. Now, the setup wizard, uh, typically you would get an Android device out of the box and you would either go through the setup wizard or you would bypass the setup wizard using the setup wizard bypass barcode that we include on every stage now configuration sheet. Now, understand that the setup wizard itself is a GMS component. So given that we're not going to be wanting GMS components on the device enabled, then you would, as part of your staging setup, typically as step one, bypass that setup wizard, bypass the setup wizard by scanning the barcode. And then as the second step, you would do all of your configuration that you've defined in the StageNow desktop tool. And you want the first item 
of that configuration to be to apply GMS restricted if you want GMS restricted applied or GMS restricted with profile but the key is you want that to be the first thing you do before you configure any communication on the device before configuring a VPN or your Wi-Fi settings and the reason for that is is quite straightforward obviously before you put the device into GMS restricted then there will be a very short time period where any app on the device could or service could conceivably contact Google and so if you if you um, apply GMS restricted as the first step then you're minimizing that window of opportunity for communication to well zero because uh, you're doing that before it had any configuration available and so I, I don't know why I put the third the third bullet is essentially just summarizing the slide there bypass the barcode set up wizard and then uh, scan the stage now barcode so I have a demonstration. This is a TC57. You can do this yourself today if you have a TC57 handy. And uh, you download the very latest lifeguard image. Like I said before, it needs to be running MX 8.3. And this is what the stage now profile looked like when I did this screenshot. This is actually a little bit old now. This is stage now 3.2. Uh, and I'm selecting the GMS restricted feature set. So I'll just run this demo. I think it's like one minute, but I'll talk over it as it goes through, just demonstrating that there are many GMS apps on the device, maps, photos, play movies, play music, all of that good stuff. Now from stage now, I'm scanning a barcode and uh, Pretty much immediately, you'll notice that all of the GMS apps have disappeared from the home screen, from the launcher. Uh, and if I were to go into the launcher itself, then you'll see that there are no GMS apps available. What I could have done as a second step in my stage now profile is to have configured a keyboard. I think I've got a, a I, put, I think I've put this point on a, on a slide somewhere, um, but at the moment with the Gboard disabled, the, the device doesn't have a, a an active keyboard so you need to either say to it use the AOSP keyboard or use the EKB the enterprise keyboard keyboard so that's a full restricted mode uh, if you were to be using profiles I noticed because the stage now desktop tool has automatic updates enabled my stage now the other week updated itself to version 3.3 and that included the MX9 updates, which also has the GMS profile uh, settings within it. So the very latest stage now looks like this. You can select a profiled GMS feature set and choose from one of those three profiles without the, the fancy icons that I had on my slide, but yeah, Chrome, Google Maps, or Firebase Cloud Messaging. But because we don't yet have a device image that supports that functionality, then you know, no, no device would be able to to actually do this today. Although uh, revisit this in, uh, I, I, I'm not sure, revisit this shortly uh, when we release the feature and this would of course work. Uh, so I, I do get a number of frequently asked questions. We've been developing this feature for a number of, well, quite a few months now. I've been kind of the nominal feature lead for this. And so I, I have fielded a, a lot of genuinely frequently asked questions. So I thought I would go over some of those now in this presentation. How do I transition from a non-GMS device to a restricted GMS device? I think I covered this on a previous slide, but devices which currently ship with a AOSP variant will continue to do so. If you're upgrading, uh, your device to a platform that does not support AOSP. Uh, so for example, I mean, this, this only really covers if you're upgrading devices, so you're moving from TC51 to TC52, uh, then your line of business apps will continue to work. So you have business apps that work on AOSP on a TC51. The question is, will those continue to work on a 52 in restricted GMS? The answer is yes, because those apps have been written to work without the presence of any GMS applications or services. Uh, going the other way, if you were to go from a restrict from a GMS, uh, an app that uses GMS, and then you run that on a restricted GMS device, 
then those line of business, same line of business apps are not guaranteed to work if they are using GMS features or, or applications. And I've got a whole slide that goes into that in a little bit more detail towards the end of the deck where I talk about developer considerations. But essentially just the same as if you have an app today that's written for GMS, you're not going to expect that to work on a non-GMS device. Does my EMM support GMS restricted? I've actually had to go back and re-record and redub over this portion of the presentation because what I said live was wrong. I think what I actually said live was it's not supported at all. I've since spoken to our EMM team. The truth is that EMMs which are designed to work with AOSP, uh, i.e. non-GMS, should work with GMS restricted. And well, first of all, there are very few uh, EMMs that are currently designed to work with AOSP. Uh, and of those that do work with AOSP, they support AOSP mode. And we internally at Zebra have tested the AOSP client of those EMMs and it works, which is good. You know, so we have a solution. Uh, if we're talking about formal support, though, we don't yet have the EMM clients claiming full support for GMS restricted and that is the way around it needs to happen because all of this work to support uh, application installation and communication outside of the standard GMS uh, APIs that Google provide for this needs to be implemented by the EMM. So uh, we're working with our EMM partners to get that support there for GMS restricted. We expect to see it soonish but at the moment today, AOSP designed clients should work in GMS restricted. Uh, a bit of an easier one. Does GMS restricted work with zero touch? Uh, no, because zero touch requires the setup wizard as well as a number of other GMS components to function. Excuse me. OK, uh, can I suggest a new profile? I, I covered this previously. We have three. Certainly we will be adding more in time. So we are open if there are profile suggestions from customers. Can I use the Play Store? No, the Play Store is a GMS application and we have not exposed a profile to enable the Play Store. It, honestly, in my testing, I found that uh, the Play Store had uh, an awful lot of dependencies. And if you were, if you want, it didn't really make sense to have GMS restricted with the Play Store profile because you had to re-enable so much of GMS restricted. You kind of think, well, what's the point of having a GMS restricted device? So the, the, the short answer is no, um, and there's no plans to, to expose such a profile. Will, uh, that's supposed to be, will my application or will any application be affected? I kind of touched on this earlier on. So if the application depends on GMS applications or services, then yes, it will be affected. Uh, I have provided some code samples and I'm working on a blog post to go into more details about how you might consider or take action within your app and just understand whether or not you have those GMS services available. For third-party sideloaded closed source applications, it's it's not possible to say how those apps have been written. Um, honestly, if, if you're relying on third-party apps, uh, then testing is pretty much the only way you have of knowing whether or not those work on an AOSP device, or on a GMS restricted device, sorry. Uh, and even then you have no reliable way of knowing that in the future, those apps will continue to work on a restricted GMS device because it all depends on whether that app developer adds GMS capabilities into their app. Now, for example, like Firefox, I've tested it. It seems to work in GMS restricted, but I can't recommend using Firefox because I don't know whether that will continue to work in the future. Although, well, anyway, I don't want to make any recommendations. We have the Chrome profile if you need a browser. That is the official recommendation for using a browser. Are applications uninstalled? So the, the answer is no. Please don't go away from this presentation thinking that if you put your device into GMS restricted, we're uninstalling GMS apps. We're not. The applications are just being disabled. And by virtue of the fact that they're disabled, they are not able to communicate with Google. So we're, we're just stopping them from doing anything. Uh, and just to add some clarification here, 
Uh, it's not possible to re-enable an app when on a GMS restricted device. Uh, let, let's take uh, the YouTube as an example. Uh, so if I, if I have restricted my device uh, through GMS restricted, I am not able as a end user by going to the application info and then clicking that button that says re-enable um, because that won't work, it's, it's been grayed out. So I'm not able to enable YouTube that way or I'm also not able to enable it as an administrator. We do have an MX feature in the application manager called enable application. If you call that on a device which is restricted, it will have no effect. Uh, the reason we have done that is because we don't want the, the device getting into an unknown state. When we put the, the device into a restricted state, it's a, it's a known state. We have tested it in this state with the specific applications that we have disabled. It is, uh, if, if you start disabling applications ad hoc, and I'm speaking from experience, it is very easy to get yourself into a situation where your device becomes unusable and you have to, if you're lucky, you have to perform a complete factory reset to get it back to how it was uh, because you've disabled something that shouldn't have been disabled. We don't want you to get into that state and that's why GMS restricted is a very controlled state and we don't enable you to like pick and choose by re-enabling applications ad hoc when it's in the restricted mode. Uh, oh, excuse me, got a bit of a dry throat. So it's the application web view affected. Uh, we've been very careful with this incidentally. So today, uh, we, I mean, we have an application called Enterprise Browser. We know we have a large audience using our devices who develop applications with web view based frameworks like Cordova and Ionic. I've done uh, dev talks on those in the past. All of those applications will continue to work. Uh, the, the web view continues to be a component that you can use in your apps without issue. Uh, we are continuing to monitor that. Uh, like obviously the web view is a closed source component from Google over the years. It has undergone a number of changes. Like originally it was part of uh, AOSP and then they started bringing in uh, like delivering the, the web view through the Play Store, weren't they? So it was like a pre-built component. Um, we've tested it. It does not communicate with Google at rest. Uh, and so this is still enabled and still able to use it within your app. Uh, so yeah, it, it continues to work. It's not a, it's not a disabled component. So uh, I think I covered this previously. Briefly, like how does this relate to the previous disable GMS apps feature? It's, it's not been in the platform that long. We only added it um, a few iterations ago, uh, this disable GMS apps feature. But think of, think of that as uh, happening at a single point in time. So all it does is this little algorithm I've written here. So for each application on the device, if it's a GMS app, then disable it. Um, when you update your device, then if that new update has a new GMS app, it's not automatically disabled because it is a momentary stateless setting. GMS restricted, on the other hand, is a fully managed mode, which cannot be escaped or bypassed. So again, in contrary to this disable GMS apps, remember previously when I was talking about the enable application action could had no effect when it was in GMS restricted mode. That same enable action, uh, sorry, that same enable application action will work uh, on a device on which you have called this disable GMS app. So it, again, it's easy to get yourself into a state where the device is unstable because you've disabled something that you shouldn't have disabled. I mean, some of these things are obvious, like com dot android dot. Play Store, com.android.chrome, com.google.maps. You know, what, what is that? It's obvious what those are. Many are like, a bit more, um, uh, a bit more, uh, not, it's, it's more difficult to tell what they are, like the GSF login, you know, service. I've, I've been asked questions like, hey, what is this GSF login service? And I'm, I'm not really sure. Google service framework login. And, you know, it takes quite a lot of effort to try and understand what those are. Um, anyway, so we've done the hard work for you. That's what I'm trying to say. 
Uh, and which one should I use? You should use uh, the GMS manager, the restricted mode where possible in your deployment. So why do we only support the uh, 660 based products? The honest answer is because on the non 660 based products on those older devices, the devices like the 51, the 56, the 70, uh, the 70 and the 75, no 70X, yes 70X. Uh, anyway, so on, on the non 660 devices, uh, we didn't need to because they continue to receive the AOSP SKUs, the AOSP bills, and you can download those. They get lifeguard updates. They're now on Oreo, the devices that have received an update. So it's all, you know, there's, there's no need to change on those devices. Um, how do I enable location on a GMS restricted device? If you want to just have location, the current recommendation is to use the maps profile. So when you enable the maps profile, once we release this feature, it will set the location accuracy to the highest available on the device. It will automatically accept any location dialogues that Google pops up, like are you, do you give consent for the location? And it will turn location on where it's off on the device so, uh, and Wi-Fi scanning as well. So the, it, it's enabling as much as it can to give you the highest accuracy location within that maps profile. The only other side effect, of course, is that you have the maps icon but if you're using some kind of uh, home screen launcher, then you can easily hide that if you wish to do so. <laughs> the, most, the most common request I get is, uh, can I get a list of these GMS applications? And the answer is always no. Uh, we don't publish a list externally and we do everything we can to avoid publishing that list internally. And the reason is because it just gets out of date so quickly. Um, every new version of Android publishes uh, you know, has different applications from the previous, and so it, it would be impossible for us to keep this uh, this this list of GMS apps up to date. Um, how do you define one application? Is I think this is the final page of questions. I apologise if the the format of the slides is getting a bit repetitive. Uh, so a GMS application is, and these are the applications that we disabled. It's published or signed by Google, and crucially. We define it as, uh, so in the documentation, you'll read like it's it's a safe app or it's safe to disable. Now what that's getting at is we've identified at least one package which is mandatory to be enabled for the device to boot. So if we were to disable this package, the device would not boot. And there's no guarantee that in the future there will not be additional packages that are essential for the device to boot and to run in a, in a stable fashion. Now we've done the testing and we've determined that these mandatory packages that we're not disabling do not communicate with Google. Uh, and so that, that's that's good. You know, we, we haven't disabled it, but it doesn't communicate. So there's no privacy issues and we've we've tested it in, in various scenarios and we can we can assert that. We will continue to monitor this scenario because again, in the future, uh, it. There's nothing stopping Google from releasing such a package that is needed and does communicate with their backends. But obviously, if that ever were to happen, then we would be having that. First thing we would do is to have the conversation with with Google to sort of say, why is this? Try and try and maybe fix that before it ever gets uh, into the, the hands of our users. So that brings us on to the question of, well, how are we implementing this? Are we blocking communication with Google at the network layer? Uh, and the answer is no, we're, we're just disabling these apps. If you if you were, for example, to put Firefox on the device and navigate to www.google.co.uk or .com or .co.in, it would reach Google servers. We're not, it's not a network level block that we're doing, it's just by disabling applications. And equally crucially, if you re-enable applications by enabling a profile, then those apps are able to communicate with Google servers to provide their value. Like Maps needs to download map data. FCM needs to receive messages telling it that you want to push, push a cloud message to it. Firebase is owned by Google. They're all Google servers. They're in Google server fund. So they need to have access to Google to function. Uh, so finally, a little bit of a, a different format of slide. I 
I put this slide together just to highlight how the restricted function works across uh, various types of device reset and device reboot. So a standard device reboot is what you know, press and hold the power key, device comes back, it's still in a restricted mode after it comes back. If I update the operating system, I go from O to P, from P to Q, whatever we have in the future, then uh, the apps remain disabled, the services remain disabled, and all of the, let's say you had the maps profile enabled before the update, after the update, the maps profile remains enabled, and if under the covers, the maps app had different dependencies on the old OS versus the new OS, we handle all of that for you. So we take care of disabling the old dependencies, re uh, enabling the new dependencies, that all happens automatically for you. So restricted mode persists across an OS update. If you're performing an enterprise reset, uh, and if you're not familiar with what enterprise reset is, this is a, a mode that we enable, so it's, it's a type of reset where you put the device back into a state where it is staged and ready to be put out into your deployment, ready to be reprovisioned by your EMM, for example. Uh, so you you would maybe persist the Wi-Fi settings. That's an easy one to, to sort of uh, explain. So that the device is able to reconnect to the Wi-Fi after an enterprise reset, and you achieve that through the persistence manager in stage now. So you would you would uh, persist. GMS restricted through that same persistence manager. The very important note is you need to uh, initiate the enterprise reset also through uh, through stage now uh, and make sure, well, you can also do it as a developer, but make sure that when doing that, you bypass the setup wizard. Otherwise, when the device comes back after the enterprise reset, you get the setup wizard trying to run and GMS restricted trying to close the setup wizard and things get confused. So you just make, make sure that you bypass that setup wizard. If you want to turn everything off, then you can always do a, a factory reset and the device goes back to the, the factory state. Uh, so GMS restricted is, is turned off just like all of our other configuration. Okay, the, the testing. So I, I put this test framework together and I've actually, if you look at the links at the end of this presentation. I've got uh, like on my personal blog post I put together to explain what we've done here. So this is what our, uh, our developers, our system test team, this is the process they went through in order to determine whether data was leaving the device. So we had end-to-end -end communication with Google was possible, but we were routing goodness me, we were routing, I forgot where I was then, we were routing all of the uh, data from the device through a VPN tunnel to a local Linux server. This is just the setup that I found in a guide online. I'm sure other setups work equally well. We were capturing the packets going over the VPN, and this enabled us to determine where the packets were going, whether they were going to Google or whether they were going somewhere else, and through analyzing those packet captures, and we were able to get some assurance that we had a restricted device that was not communicating with Google. And you can run this exact same setup on your company site if you're concerned that devices are releasing information, not just to Google, but to anyone, then you can do this kind of same setup and just make sure that we're telling the truth and the, the device is indeed not communicating. And uh, to link, link at the end of this deck to a bit more detail on that. Uh, so like I said earlier, I am putting together a full uh, blog post on the developer impact of GMS restricted, but there's two main sort of columns or areas that an app may be impacted. So you might have dependencies on other GMS apps. The examples I've used are you're launching Google Maps in order to display a location, or you're launching Chrome in order to display a, a particular website. As, as a, you know, Chrome as an external application on the device. Uh, or your app may have dependencies on Google Play services. So any of these apps that require the Google API client, so the most common ones in, in the enterprise are location to determine where the device is. Safety net used uh, for device attestation just to make sure that the device is what it claims to be. 
uh, maybe less used in enterprise things like awareness uh, to understand the device whether you the user is like running or jogging or, or walking you know, some some uh, use cases exist uh, places like where the devices but you know this is whole ream of of apis that google provides which are only available through the uh, google play services so in terms of action you should uh, you know, maybe a profile could help in that example where you were launching a map to display a location then if you were to re re-enable maps through the maps profile then hey, your app will continue to work because now maps is is available on the device or any other app that handles the the uh, mime type and data type of the intent i might be getting the the, the actual you know, technical terminology wrong there but essentially another app on the device which can handle that intent you could install that third-party app or maybe even handle them yourself in another line of business app um, so this little code sample here uh, is for example just making making sure this is good practice and uh, i honestly i don't do it myself but i should do just make sure that the intent is going to resolve before calling it so it's, i'm trying to uh, Launch, I'm creating an intent which is going to call view and it's going to to show geo so this is a protocol is, is geo here and uh, I just want to show London in my in, in a map so if I run this on my phone it will launch maps but if I launch it on a restricted GMS device because this uh, package manager no this is an intent API but, but this API has returned null non-null therefore like the I show this toast to say I can't actually show the map it's, it's defensive programming would be the the way I would describe this in one word and then the more complex example is to check whether or not this Google API client ever connects so the, the paradigm you use if you're using any of those uh, those Google API client APIs is you have to connect to the, the Google client and you get this unconnected callback so the, like, the simple summary is if I never get the unconnected callback then I can assume that for whatever reason I, I'm not running on a device where I have Google services available GMS services specifically uh, and there's this very simple uh, Google services check app that I put together in my github that you can sort of use but it's, it's not very many lines it's quite simple but you know, often it's easier to to take someone else's work and uh, just just use that rather than have, have to try and write it yourself. Uh, so with that, I I just had the the resources. So we have the the tech docs page that explains GMS Manager, the stage now setting that you use to enable GMS restricted mode, the app manager, the, the, the old disable GMS apps action. A couple of unofficial links. This is my sample for detecting whether Google services exist. And another unofficial link, which is to my personal web page where I describe that traffic analysis methodology, how you might detect what data is leaving your Android device. It's, it's the same methodology that our, our team used internally. Notice I put this together. It was a nice little Christmas project for me back in 2017, but we finally got the product, uh, the feature into a state where we're able to release it into production. So it feels good from my point of view. We will be releasing documentation uh there's like a whole user guide i've put together we're waiting until we release the profiles aspect of gms restricted because we want to have like a single source for our documentation but that essentially that is going to cover everything that i've spoken about in this dev talk and goes into a, probably a little bit more detail um but yeah with with that if there was anything i didn't cover in my extensive frequently asked questions then i'll open it up uh, stacy to questions at this point please yes darren we actually have quite a few questions but you were so thorough in answering questions i wanted to make sure that we went through that first so if anything repeats it's just simply because um i want to make sure that we we tackle that and there's about 15 questions so if we don't get to all of them perhaps that's something we can address in the post on the dev portal or a post on the dev portal for folks Folks. Sure. Um, so let me start off by Matt has asked data wedge voice input seems to leverage the native Google Android STT engine in order to leverage that functionality do we have to use 
the GMS STT or can we use a separate engine? Um, so today, I believe we need to use the GMS. So that would not work on a restricted GMS device. I, I don't know what the official line is. I know the team were considering non-GMS uh, voice engines, but I, I honestly don't know where that is in terms of commitment or whether they, they've agreed to that and much less a time scale. So I, I'd say it is on the roadmap, but today you, you need to have GMS restricted to have voice input enabled in Data Wedge. You, you can't use it with GMS restricted, sorry. Okay, and um, the next question is what keyboard will be the default when restrict mode is enabled? So there is no default keyboard. Uh, what you would need to do, and this, I didn't have it in the presentation, but I, I definitely have this somewhere in the blog post. I think I wrote it, uh, which isn't public yet. Uh, you need to like, specify the keyboard as another stage now setting. So you would have a stage now setting for GMS restricted, and then I think it's like set IME, and you have to give it the class name and the activity name of the keyboard. You can either choose the AOS keyboard, AOSP keyboard or the enterprise keyboard where the latter is available on the device, but you you can ha you could set it to any keyboard you like, but a default one is not selected automatically for you. You would need to do it as a separate staging step today. Okay, and this bridges on that question a little bit. Will, will a factory or enterprise reset bring, bring the device back to a GMS enabled unit or does it de depend? Uh, so factory reset, no. Mm -hmm. uh, enterprise reset, you need to use the uh, persistence manager. I, I had that on one of the later slides. And I think yeah. I covered that after the question came in probably. I think you did, yeah. So I just wanna make sure we address them. Um, yeah. We will share this presentation for those who have asked. Um, available profiles, do I need a Google account to run this application? You do not need a Google account for any of the profiles. Um, like an example of that, in fact, there's, there's the two examples there with Chrome. You can obviously sign into Chrome. We are not enabling signing into Chrome as part of the Chrome profile. You're only able to use Chrome to view web pages. Uh, and the same with maps, you can view map locations without signing in. But if you sign into maps with a Google account, you get a location history and whatever else. You know. But we don't allow signing in because we don't see those as, as big enterprise use cases. And when I say we don't allow, I'm only talking about in GMS restricted. If you don't have GMS restricted on the device, of course, it's standard Android, you could sign into Chrome and, and sign into maps. So if you needed to sign in, then GMS restricted is is not uh, applicable to you. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll tackle a few more here and then I'll um, copy these and make sure that you have them, Darren, so you can p potentially address them if you haven't already in your future post. Um, if GMS restricted is only for SD six sixty devices, can you leverage the App Manager disable app MX option to just selectively disable each of the GMS apps that you want to disable on a non Helios device like a TC fifty one? You can, yes, um, but from personal experience, it becomes very difficult to, to understand exactly which apps you should enable and disable. I did put a blog post together probably a year and a half ago now, and there's, there's like an application which uh, calls the disable app, and it, it gives you all of the apps in like a massive long list, so you can choose which app you want to disable. So it, it does work, it is possible, but the difficult bit is knowing which applications and packages you want to disable. Okay, and does the GMS restricted need to be activated prior to enrolling the device into an MDM, SODI, AirWatch, et cetera? Okay, so this is another one of those answers where I've had to go in and redub over the top of the original answer because the live answer was slightly misleading. Uh, if you are trying to provision an EMM which supports AOSP in GMS restricted mode, then yes, you would need to 
first of all, put the device into GMS restricted mode before you start provisioning that client. So the client is going to have been written depending on whether or not GMS services and packages are available. Uh, so some EMMs may well use the same client for both of these. It really does depend on the EMM. So they might detect are GMS services available? And then if they are, go launch as a GMS client else they might launch as an AOSP client. It really does depend on how they have implemented this. However, it's always best practice to first put the device into GMS restricted mode before trying to provision the EMM client. Um, again, note that not all clients, in fact, very few will support AOSP mode. Consult the AOSP document, uh, sorry, consult the EMM documentation for this and Zebra will be able to provide specific advice on which EMM would be best for you and there will be additional EMM information and documentation available from Zebra in the fullness of time, quite possibly by the time you're listening to this dev talk. Um, <clears throat> more questions here are coming in. Um, the, to confirm, the only way to update a GMS app in app restricted mode would be through an OS update. Is the Play Store is disabled? Correct. Yes. Okay. And and when I'm talking about a, a profile, I, I go into this more in this in this uh, user guide I'm putting together. But we don't support the scenario where like update Chrome or update Maps through the Play Store and then put the device into GMS restricted with the maps profile for example because it, it's very easy like you've you've then updated the app and it's in a, a state where we haven't been able to test that app so we don't know maybe there were the dependencies changed after you updated the app and it now uses another service which expects to be on the device uh, so yeah we only support updates through uh, an, an os update where we can do that testing ourselves whenever we update the lifeguard version okay all right, um, we're almost out of time here. I um, The presentation, there's been quite a few questions. It will be shared on the dev um, blog, uh, the blog that we posted announcing um, this webinar. And then when we can get this process, we will also be publishing up to our U YouTube playlist for developers. Um, and so I've, I've written down any other questions that some folks will have. And so I'll make sure that um, these are provided to Darren and he addresses these if they haven't already been addressed in some of his prior blogs and his upcoming blog, which I believe it will be in some of this presentation. So with that, we're at the close. Uh, we only have about a minute left here. Darren, any closing words? Uh, no, only uh, hopefully to see as, as many of the audience at App Forum as possible. So I'll be at all <laughs> four App Forums. So if you can come, then please do. It'd be great to meet many of you. Yeah, it would be excellent. Um, it's going to, it's proving to be a really um, exciting event this year. So we're hopeful that um, many of you will attend and please reach out to us as we will all be there. Thank you so much for everyone for attending today's um, dev webinar. And uh, we look forward to our next one next month and uh, look for information on our dev portal as well. And please join us at developer.zebra.com. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.